I am an extreme sports enthusiast who loves surfing and paragliding. I have always dreamed of reaching a real paragliding paradise and enjoying the beauty and excitement there. In 2016, my dream finally came true when I arrived in Nepal. The country is known for its stunning paragliding terrain, so I was really looking forward to this trip. Nepal has magnificent natural landscapes and some of the highest mountains in the world. After a day of rest, I was ready to go to the paragliding base to complete my challenge. The next morning, we took a bus to the paragliding base in the mountains. In the car, I met a few friends who love extreme sports as much as I do, and we exchanged our experiences and lessons learned. As the car got closer to the top of the mountain, I saw the spectacular mountains and the stunning natural scenery. Eventually, we reached the paragliding base at the top of the mountain. The atmosphere here was very lively, with people wearing all kinds of sports equipment, some preparing for paragliding, and some chatting and exchanging ideas. I felt very excited and thrilled because I knew that I was about to fulfill my dream, challenge my limits and enjoy the excitement and thrill of paragliding. After the manager checked my paragliding certificate, he arranged for me to go to the nearest takeoff point. Soon, I was flying in the sky. I was surrounded by spectacular snow-capped mountains and stunning natural scenery, which gave me a great sense of satisfaction. During my flight, I suddenly felt an undercurrent hit me, which made my paraglider start to become uncontrollable. This made my heart beat faster. The management told me over the intercom that I had to get back on land as soon as possible. I started to descend fast and the paraglider became more and more unstable. I felt very scared because I knew how serious it was. As I approached the ground, my paraglider started to tangle together. I tried to deploy the paraglider, but it was still out of control. I impacted on the ground. The moment I landed, I felt a violent wave of dizziness, and then I lost consciousness. When I woke up again, I found myself in an ambulance, surrounded by the strong smell of sterilization. My breathing had become extremely difficult and I was still coughing, even with a trace of blood. I knew that the situation had become very serious. In the ambulance, I tried to sit up, but the severe pain forced me to give up. I began to feel scared and wondered how serious my injuries really were. The paramedics kept asking me about my condition, but I could only barely answer them. My head was getting dizzy, and slowly I lost consciousness again. It was as if I was floating in endless darkness. I saw my own body. It was lying in the ambulance, its body trembling violently, as if it was under some great pressure. I felt like I was leaving the world and slowly began to lose my sense of reality. I felt an invisible force, as if it was trying to pluck my soul out of my body. In the process, my mind became unusually clear, as if I possessed an intelligence beyond human comprehension. Suddenly, I felt a powerful force, as if it was going to suck me in. In the next second, I found myself in the middle of a beautiful and mysterious scene. Majestic buildings and stunning natural scenery appeared around me, which left me in awe. The buildings were decorated with ornate carvings and beautiful arches. Exuding an ancient and solemn aura. Around the building stretched a lush forest, where trees and flowers of various shapes and sizes grew. On the branches of the trees also rested some birds, which sang happily, filling the whole scene with vitality and vigor. I couldn't believe that everything in front of me was real. I walked toward the spectacular building. There were some small gardens and sculptures along the road, which made the place more vivid and interesting. I also met a group of children, who were playing. When they saw me, they greeted me together. 
They spoke a language I didn't quite understand. Like a very old language. Although I didn't understand much, I could feel their friendliness. They also took my hand and showed me around the small village. I found the place very clean and tidy, and the villagers were very friendly and made me feel very comfortable and at ease. Finally, I said goodbye to them and continued my own journey. Finally, I arrived at the front of the building. It was a huge and magnificent building that looked ancient and mysterious. There were so many gorgeous carvings and patterns on the building that I felt as if I was in a fantasy world. I gazed at it and a strong curiosity came over me. I wanted to know what it was like inside. An old man dressed in ancient costume appeared in front of me. With a friendly smile on his face, he greeted me and asked if I needed help. I was a little surprised because I didn't know this old man. I answered his question politely anyway. The old man told me that the building was a library. There were many mysterious books inside. He invited me to enter the library with him. When I stepped inside this library, I was blown away by the sight before me. There were so many books inside that I couldn't count them. The books were neatly arranged on huge bookshelves. There were many people here, most of them reading or researching intently. They were all dressed in vintage clothes, which suited the atmosphere of the place perfectly. Some were sitting silently at their tables, studying intently. Others were exchanging their findings or sharing their experiences of reading books. I asked the old man next to me, can I read these books? The old man smiled and replied, of course you can. I followed up by asking what the content of these books was. The old man pondered for a moment and then told me that each book represented a person's life. Some people's lives are full of adventure and excitement, and the book about them is like a novel full of adventure stories. Some people love food, and their books are more like a food guide. Others lead ordinary lives. And their books are more like a boring novel. After hearing the old man's explanation, my curiosity became stronger. I walked over to the bookshelf and a heavy book caught my attention. The book was about the life journey of a single mother. This woman was born into a not-so-happy family. Abandoned by her parents at a young age. At the age of seven, she was adopted by her current adoptive parents. The love of her adoptive parents made her feel the warmth of a family again. She studied hard as a child and won a scholarship. In college, she met her first boyfriend and they were in love for two years. But eventually, the relationship broke up due to discord, leaving the girl very sad. In order to escape the pain, she began to smoke and drink, and this state of life lasted for a long time. When she was 26, she met a colleague at work, and the two fell in love and got married. Soon, they welcomed their children and the woman began to enjoy the happiness of a family. But when she was 30, her husband fell in love with another woman, which eventually led to their divorce. The woman completely lost faith in love and began to become withdrawn and apathetic. However, she did not give up on life. She put more energy into her career and her children. She lived a happy life in her later years. She died at the age of 81. She became strong after experiencing adversity and appreciated her life more. Although it did not work out in her relationship, she was a very qualified mother. I was very emotional when I finished reading this book. This woman has gone through so many trials and tribulations in her life, but she has learned from each adversity and made herself stronger. This book gave me a lot of insight. I realized that in life, we need to face setbacks bravely and that every setback is an opportunity to grow. 
As I read this book, I felt like I was in the world of that single mother, experiencing her life together with her. Each experience touched my heart deeply. When I read that she was abandoned by her parents, I felt her helplessness and loneliness, when she felt the warmth of her family again, I also felt a warm current rushing into my heart. This feeling made me feel very wonderful, as if I really became the woman in the book, going through all the emotions and experiences with her. I was attracted to the other book on my left. Because compared to the other book, this book is very thin. The boy was born in a bad family. His father was a very irritable man who often beat him and his mother. This made the boy eccentric and withdrawn from childhood. He was not good at socializing and always stayed in a corner by himself. The boy came out to work early, but it was hard for him to fit in with the team because he would not deal with the people around him. He always did things alone and did not communicate with others, which made his colleagues think he was strange. As time went on, the boy's work performance became worse and worse, and he became more and more depressed. He became addicted to banned substances, which became his only support. He felt he could no longer stand the feeling of loneliness and helplessness. So, he ended his life at the age of 26. After reading this story, my heart aches for this boy. He had a very unhappy upbringing and family, suffering violence and beatings from his father, which made him withdrawn and poorly socialized. Everyone's life is different, and therefore everyone's book will be different. This book will be forever in the library of heaven for all to study and learn from. What is in these books depends entirely on each person's experience and choices. We should be brave enough to do what we want to do and not leave ourselves with regrets. There are so many things in this world that are worth exploring and experiencing. If we don't try, we may miss a lot of wonderful things. Let's cherish every opportunity to make our lives more interesting and fulfilling. When I opened my eyes again, I was lying in a hospital bed. This experience also changed my life completely. I realized that the most important things in this world are not wealth, status or fame. Rather, it is the things that really make people feel warm and happy. These are the things that we should pursue the most. I know what I want to do, what direction I want to move in, and to become a more life-loving person.